From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Every 40 seconds, a suicide takes place somewhere in the world. But the World Health Organization says only a few countries have policies aimed at suicide prevention. The United Nations Agency released a report about the issue on September 10th. The WHO report says suicide is a major international health problem. And the experts say about 75% of suicides happen in low and middle income countries. The WHO says the highest rates of suicide are found in Central and Eastern Europe and in some Asian countries. It says suicide rates in Africa appear to be lower. The WHO report also says suicide rates are highest in people over the age of 70. So what leads people to kill themselves? The International Association for Suicide Prevention says studies have shown that being alone a lot can increase the risk of suicide. They say that having strong connections to others can help protect against suicide. The IASP says simply reaching out to people who have become disconnected from others may be a life-saving act. The WHO Director of Mental Health and Substance Abuse says there is much more that communities can do to provide support. Shakar Saxena says suicide is the final decision for people who are feeling alone, depressed, and hopeless. Often, these people reach out for help. Mr. Saxena explains how people can do more to provide support for people who find themselves at the lowest point in life. The World Health Organization is calling for nations to cancel laws that make suicide a crime. It says people who try to kill themselves need mental health treatment, not prison. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. A new study has found that excessive alcohol drinking costs Americans more than $220 billion a year. But the organizers of the study believe the biggest cost comes from the loss of worker productivity. Robert Brewer works for America's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a public health agency. He helped to produce a report on the study. Researchers used findings from 2006 to examine costs linked to heavy drinking. They looked at results from around the United States and found a lot of variation in different parts of the country. Alcohol-related costs include health care, the cost of trying cases for alcohol-related crimes, and property damage from road accidents. Robert Brewer says the biggest cost, however, is the loss of productivity. Many people with a drinking problem have lower paying jobs. He says they may also be less productive when they are at work. Mr. Brewer says there is also a huge cost to people who die from alcohol-related causes. He says many are young and their incomes and productivity 
are tragically lost. The researchers were mainly concerned about the cost of heavy alcohol use. The study did not look at the effect on individuals who drink a glass of beer or wine with dinner. Mr. Brewer says the largest costs come from binge drinking, when people drink a lot of alcohol in a short period of time. The study was based on the economic costs of heavy drinking in the United States. But Mr. Brewer says many nations have problems with what the World Health Organization calls harmful use of alcohol. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. The heart is our life force. It pumps blood, which carries oxygen to every organ in the body. As the blood flows through the blood vessels, it puts pressure on the vessel walls. That pressure is often measured when you go to see a doctor or other health care worker. Blood pressure readings are often taken with a cuff tightened around the upper arm. Blood pressure is measured using two numbers. The first, or upper number, is called the systolic pressure. The lower number is the diastolic pressure. The upper number shows the pressure inside the blood vessels when the heart is pumping. The lower number shows the pressure when the heart rests between beats. Both numbers are important. Stephen Havas is with the University of Maryland School of Medicine. He says any level above 115 for the systolic pressure or 75 for the diastolic pressure doubles the risk of problems. High blood pressure, known as hypertension, is a major cause of heart disease, stroke, and death. The World Health Organization recently urged the medical community to strengthen efforts to prevent and control high blood pressure. WHO officials say one-third of people over the age of 25 have hypertension yet many do not know they have it. Often, it can be difficult to identify an exact cause for a person's hypertension. With age, the blood vessels can harden and affect the flow of blood. Genetics and family history have an influence too, but being overweight, smoking, or eating foods that contain a lot of salt can also cause blood pressure to rise. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Extreme hot weather in India and Pakistan has led to hundreds of deaths. Several hot days that follow each other are considered a heat wave. The most common health problem linked to hot weather is heat stress. It is also the least severe. Heat stress causes muscle pain. The pain warns the body that it is becoming too hot. Doctors say those suffering muscle pain should stop all activity 
and rest in a cool place. They should also drink cool liquids. Untreated heat stress can lead to a more serious problem called heat exhaustion. A person suffering from heat exhaustion loses too much water through perspiration. They feel weak and extremely tired. Heat exhaustion may also produce a fast heartbeat, breathing problems, and head, chest, or stomach pains. Doctors say patients should rest quietly in a cool place and drink plenty of water. It may help to wash with cool water. Experts say even a 2% drop in the body's water supply may cause dehydration. This can mean problems with memory and even simple mathematics. The treatment for dehydration is the same as for heat exhaustion. Drink plenty of water and rest in a cool place. To avoid dehydration, people should drink about two liters of water a day. Heat stroke is the most serious disorder linked to hot weather. It happens when the body cannot control its temperature. The body temperature increases to more than 40 degrees Celsius and stops perspiring. The skin becomes dry and very hot. A person may not know what is happening. In extreme cases, permanent brain damage and death may result. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Magic is the performance of tricks. It has been a part of almost every culture in the world for centuries. Magic shows today might include a disappearing act, card tricks, or pulling a rabbit out of a hat. But what could that have to do with health? One American magician goes beyond just entertaining crowds. Kevin Spencer also makes magic to improve the lives of people with disabilities. Mr. Spencer has been a magician for more than 30 years. He said he saw his first magic show at five years old. He said he told his mother then that he wanted to be a magician when he grew up. But early in his career, a bad car accident changed the focus of his work. Mr. Spencer was in a car crash that injured his brain and his spinal cord. He was in therapy for almost a year to regain skills. His accident made him think about using magic tricks as a tool for healing. He said the movements required to perform a magic trick are similar to exercises used in traditional therapy. So Mr. Spencer now leads workshops all over the world. He teaches magic tricks to children and adults with disabilities of different levels. The magician says it helps improve physical movement, thinking, understanding, and social skills. Liam Shannon is an example of the power of magic therapy. The 10-year-old boy has the brain disorder autism. People with severe autism often have trouble understanding complex emotions. Liam says that after he learned a few simple tricks, he felt many different emotions. 
Kevin Spencer says seeing kids like Liam come alive during a workshop is better than all the cheering in the world. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the HELP Report. Some colors that people see late at night could cause signs of severe depression. That was the finding of a recent study that builds on earlier findings. They showed that individuals who live or work in low levels of light overnight can develop clinical depression or severe depression. Signs may include loss of interest or pleasure in most activities, low energy levels, and thoughts of death or suicide. In the recent study, American investigators designed an experiment that exposed hamsters to different colors. The researchers chose hamsters because they are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and are active at night. The animals were separated into four groups. One group of hamsters was kept in the dark during the nighttime period. Another group was placed in front of a blue light. A third group slept in front of a white light, while a fourth was put in front of a red light. After four weeks, the researchers noted how much sugary water the hamsters drank. They found that the more depressed animals drank the least amount of water. Randy Nelson heads the Department of Neuroscience at Ohio State University. He says animals that slept in blue and white light appeared to be the most depressed. Randy Nelson notes that photosensitive cells in the retina have little to do with eyesight he says these cells send signals to the area of the brain that controls what has been called the natural sleep-wake cycle. He says there is a lot of blue in white light. This explains why the blue light and white light hamsters appeared to be more depressed than those seeing red. For VOA Learning English, I'm Laurel Bowman. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. What is the best way to catch someone who is telling a lie? For a long time, the traditional method of identifying liars was to watch their body language, including facial expressions. Many people, from parents to police officers, depend on this method. But does a person's body and face tell the truth they are trying to hide? A recent study says no. Talking, it seems, is the best way to catch a liar, said researchers in the United Kingdom. They carried out their investigation at one place where lying can get you into big trouble, an airport. The researchers asked volunteers to pretend they were real passengers and then lie to airport security agents. Some of the agents used spoken 
conversation-based methods to question these false passengers. Others depended instead on the person's body language, like lack of eye contact and showing signs of nervousness. The agents talking with the passengers were 20 times more likely to catch the liars. The study found that these conversation-based methods can help you recognize when a person is lying to you. This method is called controlled cognitive engagement or CCE for short. Here are four ways of catching a liar using the CCE method. Use open-ended questions. Look for small details that do not make sense. Use the element of surprise when asking questions. And watch for changes in emotion or ways of speaking. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. What leads people to kill themselves? The International Association for Suicide Prevention says studies have shown that being alone a lot can increase the risk of suicide. They say that having strong connections to others can help protect against suicide. The IASP says simply reaching out to people who have become disconnected from others may be a life-saving act. The WHO Director of Mental Health and Substance From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Every 40 seconds, a suicide takes place somewhere in the world. But the World Health Organization says only a few countries have policies aimed at suicide prevention. The United Nations Agency released a report about the issue on September 10th. The WHO report says suicide is a major international health problem. And the experts say about 75% of suicides happen in low and middle income countries. The WHO says the highest rates of suicide are found in Central and Eastern Europe and in some Asian countries. It says suicide rates in Africa appear to be lower. The WHO report also says suicide rates are highest in people over the age of 70. So, suicide a crime. It says people who try to kill themselves need mental health treatment, not prison. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. A new study has found that excessive alcohol drinking costs Americans more than $220 billion a year. But it's abuse says there is much more that communities can do to provide support. Shakar Saxena says suicide is the final decision for people who are feeling alone, depressed, and hopeless. Often, these people reach out for help. Mr. Saxena explains how people can do more to provide support for people who find themselves at the lowest point in life. The World Health Organization 
is calling for nations to cancel laws that make suicide